an 8-bit Rocket Studios production. I'm right here in the vertical blinds. I'm in the aha vertical blank. Take... Programmed in basic, we explored 8-bit worlds. Pixels crashed onto a digital shore. All our records were scratched, left alone. We were latchkey children, terrified of nuclear war. In the glow of the cathode ray, every game we play on our 2600. Into the vertical blank, our highest scores have been ranked. Hey, Steve, we're recording. We want- hey, Jeff, I'm right here in the vertical blinds. I'm in the aha vertical blank. Take on me. me. Take oh, me. Was- Wait, if you do a second <laughs> verse, I can play I can play it at the beginning of the video. Ready? Ready? What? Oh, I can play two ver Take. Come on. No, man. don't do that. <laughs> go ahead, Steve. No, you don't want to play the big... Take on me. me. Take me on. Okay. So, okay. So, um, that was bad. I won't do it. So, we're here, Steve, because Atari made an announcement. He wanted to get a a video and audio podcast out very quickly. Look, every other Atari video podcast, whatever, has talked about... Even people I've never seen before. I know. Um... But especially our good friend BCB Coffee Boy, um, Ballistic Coffee he, Boy. Yeah, he did a really good um, discussion of this. And BCB Coffee Boy, if people don't see his videos, you should go subscribe to him. He does amazing Atari news almost all day, every all week single long. day. Yeah, um, we hardly ever do Atari news. We we kind of go off on our own. I like news own... from 1989 and 1984. Yeah. <laughs> We go, we go off onto our own Atari space, and that's fine for us. And uh, but, but we both kind of have an appreciation for the new Atari under Wade Rosen, because they seem to be doing some really cool stuff. And so, when we saw their new announcement, I thought, well, you know what, Jeff? Why don't we talk about Atari's new announcement of their product? Because we never do that. We very, very rarely do we have like an episode focused around it. In fact, we did that for Atari fiftieth only. Pretty much the only thing. We With Atari fiftieth, yeah, and we did, and usually we're just off in space doing our own yeah. thing in the vertical blank because that's our thing. We right? didn't really talk about the Atari VCS as a full episode. We, you know, we've talked a little bit about I don't it here own and there. It. I don't own one either, but I'll do the games. Um, if I find that the game is on Steam, also I'll include it in my videos if it's for an Atari platform. But really, no, not a lot more about it. Um, it wasn't something was... that I wanted. That's the problem. No, I didn't. It, it's not necessary for me. But but, but this a twenty six hundred plus actually is a pretty cool thing. Now, remember the Retron seventy seven yes. from a couple yes, years I, ago. Yes, I have one of those. Um, and it was it was. It, it, it had Stella on board, but it and it was a uh, a console to play your Atari twenty six hundred games, and it was pretty cool. Right. It had HDMI out. I had it hooked up to a TV for a while, and I I really liked it. You know, it had some incompatibilities, but it's a pretty good little device for hooking up to a modern TV if you want to hook up to a LCD TV and you want to play Atari twenty six hundred games and have them look the best they possibly can on an LCD TV. You know, you may actually enjoy them on a, um, you know, uh, a tube t- TV and that's fine, right? But I kind of like the way they look on an LCD t- TV. It helps um, to co- make them look really clear because we always had interference laced Atari games. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was always like channel two, being interfered with or channel three so so our our actual atari experience was very fuzzy yeah having <laughs> waves and weight like di- diagonal waves on the screen every time we played 7800 2600 the only time we didn't was on the st really 
Like even the yeah. 800 was like that. Because the ST had a great monitor right. that they that it had, but but yeah, most of the time we were desperate for our games to look better. And I know people have nostalgia for CRTs and they and they they want to um, to go back and use those TVs and it's fine, I get it, but I mean you and I coming from the era that we did, we always wanted our stuff to look better and better. Like, like, I, like vinyl, for example, this is vinyl records. Like I, I had vinyl records. We both had vinyl yep. records that we bought. They always got scratched. Kiss and I trick. could not wait to get CDs. And right. I, re, we rebought everything on CD because we we're like, Oh, finally you can sound good. I can play whatever songs I want. You know, they don't skip or where they eventually they did skip. But my point being is that we were always like, not really nostalgic for older technology. We just wanted to get the stuff we liked to look better and better. We wanted the content in a new, in the best way possible. Yeah, we wanted the content in the best way possible. Now we're nostalgic for the vertical blank, the time when Atari could have made or break, made or broke themselves. And um, but what's interesting is this Atari twenty six twenty six hundred plus seems to be taken right out of the vertical blank so why don't you so when you explain a little bit about what it is for the one person that might be watching this that has no idea <laughs> what the atari 2600 plus is sure the atari 2600 plus is a 129.99 new atari console it includes a four switch atari 2600 that's about 80 percent the size of the original it also includes a CX40 Plus joystick. I don't know what the plus means. They say it has been lovingly recreated to the same specifications as the original. This is the machine. You know what I what? You know what I wish the plus was? What? Um, a remote control to let you like reset the machine and oh, stuff. Oh, there was there's a lot of things on this that I wish was on, but but you know it it's coming. Um, it it is actually a cartridge based Atari 2600 and 7800. Um, it, which is amazing. Which is way. amazing because this is something we've wanted for a long time. Everybody wanted on the Restaurant 77, why can't it play 7800 games? Well, this can. Like, well, right the fact away. That, yeah, the fact that this new Atari under Wade Rosen is embracing the 7800 is amazing. I think I can see them understanding what what a gem the 7800 was that no one ever found out about right. i mean only 70 so games were made for the 7800 and not and a lot of time and money were put into a l most of them no not at all in my recent interview that's going to come up in a in a, in a future podcast with doug mccray from um GCC. gcc uh he he lets on that they were pretty sure the 7800 was more powerful than the nes at the time and I, I think it's debatable, but I think they, you know, I mean, given enough time, I bet the, it was at least a competitor uh, with the with the NES. Yeah, I think that the fact that you could basically at any point, just like the 2600, you could put any mapper hardware you wanted on yeah. these cartridges. You could have begun to make games that were, in fact, as good as the best mapper NES games. Sure, yeah. But so anyway. I think that's so. So that's so they're embracing the seven eight hundred. There's no seven eight hundred games for this. Year. Not yet. Not yet. Now, but it is seven eight hundred and twenty six hundred compatible, and they have a compatibility list. It's it's you know there's four or five I think games that say they don't work. I yes yes. There's more than that, but I'll tell you. So it. It features, it plays both 7800 and 2600 cartridges. It has HDMI output. That it's very easy to connect, they say, because it's HDMI. It has both a widescreen and a 4x3 mode. It okay, has an enlarged cool. cartridge socket, so you can fit some of those weird, odd, wide cartridges that wouldn't fit in the Retron 77. So they know right. the problems with the Retron 77, and they're trying yeah. to fix it. Um, and it's got like the Atari logo that lights up. It's in, it's a, it's emulation, right? But yeah, it's, it's so, apparently it's like the Retron, the Retron five. I don't know if the 77 worked this way where it, it dumps the cartridge and then plays it with the NES games. What it does is you stick an NES cartridge in and then it dumps the cartridge oh, yeah, to the local storage and then it emulates. And I believe that's else. what this does as well. Um, that's great. The, the Restaurant Five works great, but what it doesn't work with is multi for the for any of those systems. Yeah, the, and NES, so that's the, I worry SNES. that that's so we I have a concerto, 
um, card for the 7800. I hope it'll work because that's what I put my homebrew games on to test. Um, I'm hoping there's a way to test homebrew on this. Maybe I can get a, a, a cart that just allows me to flash it with my homebrew games, a single game, and then play it, if that may be possible. And that would work You know, well Steve, you well. can also play your homebrew game on your 7800 with your concerto cart. No, I do, but I but it doesn't look I, as good as this. I know. Like, I, know. I always struggle with the colors are different. Um, those things are so different that it's hard for me to tell whether what I'm doing in the emulation mode is correct or what's happening on the 7800 is correct because it's hooked up through the composite in, you know, and, and, and you know I have a composite mod, but I'm never really sure if the colors are right. And so I know that if I could see it on this, I would at least get an idea between what I have on my PC and what's showing up on the 2600 plus if the colors are even correct. So that's what I was looking for. Um, yes, I can do it on my concerto card and that's fine. I do understand that, that color thing as you were showing me that the colors showed but up you, It's also dark. There's problems with the colors being dark and stuff. And I, I you know, I'm, I'm making these, these really elaborately colorful title screens and I'd like to see them. <laughs> <laughs> so let me go through a couple more specs because these are things that some people might ask about. It is on what's called a rocket chip I think it's Rocket Chip, C-H-I-P, but I'll look it up. A Rocket Chip 3128 SOC microprocessor with 256 megs of DDR3 RAM and 250 megs of eMMC fixed internal storage. And the joystick is wired. The CX40 Plus is wired. Wired, but not, not, not it's wired, meaning that it's, it has a wire. It has a wire, it's, right. <laughs> it's, not, it's not connected. It's not connected. Permanently. These yeah. aren't I thought Mattel about that. television controllers. They're not no, they're permanently no. connected. No, no. So an SOC just means that the it's entire computer on one chip. So it's it's just everything that's on a, in a single package, which is, which is fine. Um, um, put, there's three or four things that I found that I thought were interesting to point out, but I can bring up the whole list. I'm gonna yeah, bring... just let's just talk about okay. what's here. The, so I um I saw that one of the games that I had trouble getting to work on the Retron 77 was Pitfall 2: The Lost Caverns, and this is one that was untested on their list, which is kind of annoying. Because this is one that people really want to know if it works or not. Because that's, that it will signify whether DPC plus cartridges that are made uh, now will work. So it's some right. of the ones that, that are made homebrew. Um, but uh, there's an interesting thing. You know, so also Omega Race was not tested. Omega Race uses a special controller. That's something where they really need to get a controller out that has a second button. And I'll talk about that a little bit also. And also one of the games that Atari games they really should have tested that's not is Stargate. Um, and of course, none of the games for Star Pass Supercharger are tested or anything like that also. Yeah, oddly enough, real sports boxing doesn't work either, which is sort There's of strange. A, so there are a couple games that in a 7800, you needed a bodge wire to make them work. And I'm under the impression right now that Real Sports Boxing and the one that was like Gauntlet, but not, what was that called? The um, Dark Chambers? Dark Chambers was also, those two needed this bodge wire to work in your 7800. And it might be because there's two, the com because of the way that compatibility is done on this, it may be mimicking some sort of version of the 7800 where those two needed a bodge wire to work. Right. So and I know this is both 2600 and 700, but that's just comes to mind. That's just completely false information I just said. But still, it may be. True. Right. So. So, OK, so it comes with a cartridge, too, with has 10 games. Adventure, Combat, Dodge, I'm Haunted House, Maze, Craze, Missile Command, Real Sports, Volleyball, Surround, Video, Pinball, Yards, Revenge. I mean, to me, this is not a super fantastic no. set. It's 10 in one games and, and it actually is a fairly lethargic set. Yeah. I mean, adventure's cool because of the lore around it. Combat's cool, but um, Haunted House is in interesting. Um, Yars Revenge, obviously, is classic. Right. Um, I love video pinball, um, but but there's something odd about it that you just point, pointed out. Well, I would that half of these games, let's see, Combat, B Dodge Em, Maze Craze is, well, is debatable. Real sports, volleyball, surround, those all, those five, all are better as two-player games. Yeah, they are. They're good two-player games. Those are fun games to sit and play against someone on 
the TV. Exactly. Um, I think this is actually be fun. I, I feel like this is going to go on my main television yep. set. Uh, be so so I can have people play Atari with me in my in my living room, right. not in my little um, the little den sort of Hovel. Um, extra room we have now. Yeah, this is probably going to go on the main t main TV. And actually, you know, it'll look kind of cool to have some a few Atari boxes in the in the below the TV to kind of look kind of retro right. as well. The the good boxes that I have of, of full size boxes. I think that this is interesting. I think what's interesting about the cartridges they have dip switches on them. Yes. That you need to flip to get to the game. Very cool. Which, which is which is I don't understand where that idea came from. It came but, from those 30 to, 32 and one cartridges. Oh, had. it did. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I think I didn't it know did. The I, one. There's a couple of them out there. Other ones you had to like turn it off and switch something. I don't. But I think there's there's cartridges out there that already did that. So this is like a really cool like thing that not a lot of people talk about is that these this is this these dip switches on this cartridge are very retro and inappropriate. Yeah, no, it's neat. It's actually really neat. I, I like I like how physical it is to switch the games. Like the physicality of all of this, I think is what maybe attracted people originally to the Intellivision Amico, but then that but then that disappeared fairly quickly. This really is doubling down. If you look at the box that that they they're also selling a um a paddle, a right. set of paddles with, with a with a cartridge with Breakout, Canyon Bomber, Night Driver, and Video Olympics, which all require the paddles, obviously. Um, that box with the paddles and the joystick, it's so it looks so classic Atari. It's going underneath it's the TV stand. So there. physical, so night nice. like like and and then they also are sort of selling an extra CX40, um, and a, a new version of Berserk enhanced. Yeah, with enhanced. voices. Yeah, the, let me um, read the enhancements on Berserk. This is really interesting. Robot voices, like intruder alert. Robots fire di diagonally, so it makes it more like the 5200 Atari 8-bit version. New explosion animations and some minor bug fixes. Now, because it has the voices, I'm wondering if this is using any enhancements and shows that this these enhancements will work. I don't oh. know. It's 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 in, it really is interesting. And and they also have Mr. Run and Jump, which I know is a cut down version of a mobile game or whatever is on Steam so or what? something. I just love the idea that it's a new game on the twenty six hundred. And and so and so here they are. They're they've they've released a console of the type that we asked for for a long time, which is a twenty six hundred seventy eight hundred hybrid. Hooks up to HDMI, which we've wanted, and now now they're making their own carts and yes. and releasing them and making they've they're doing old stuff, but also talking about new games. I'm like, this is, I'm sorry, this is a renaissance if for, it will, for Atari. Yeah, if it will play the new cartridges that are coming out by Atari Age and things like that, and the ones I already have, I mean, this is this is awesome. Yeah, I hope it does. It, they do try to make it compatible with Homebrew. I know they have a weird relationship with Atari Age and with the games that people make, and especially with the ones that were licensed games that weren't licensed right, that they asked Atari Age to take down. Um, but I do think there is something here for them to support the Homebrew community. What if they launched an APX, right, a but APX. for this console? And said, okay, send in your games and we'll decide, we'll say whether or not we want to put them together. Or maybe they'll they'll put a bunch of them on a multi-cart or, or, or release them as a single game. But 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 basically solicit the homebrew games now that's as a true stuff APX. to release. And call it APX, Atari Program Exchange. That would be incredible. Would I mean, be think incredible. about the things they, they could do here that harken back. But also, I mean... I mean, I could see this on the shelf at Target. I'm not saying that anyone would buy it, but what if it's on the shelf at Target and then you've got four different carts of 10 games, 10 game carts. One of them's got all the licensed arcade games on it because it costs an extra 10 bucks and they, they that's what they pay for the licenses for or something. There definitely are people, lots and lots of people who have zero nostalgia for Atari. Right. There's lots and lots of people who, who only understand video games from the NES on. Um, I think that I understand where they would look at some of this and go, yeah, Atari. Yeah. But I, I do think that what they miss is that the 7800 is as good as their NES. And some of the things that can be for the 7800 are going to blow the NES away, or at least blow away what people believe 
that the that Atari means, which is just you know the the blocky graphics like 2, on the PCS. Right. Yeah. Um. So let's talk the prices a little bit because the prices are pretty surprising. Um. Yeah. I mean, I instantly bought this because I saw it was only one hundred and twenty nine ninety nine. Well, and the so one twenty nine ninety nine. The paddles are a little bit pricey at thirty nine ninety nine with that cartridge, but that's okay. It comes it's, with the game. Well, too, this is cool. the thing that's not that's not is Berserk Enhanced is twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah, and the, so was so is the new version so of Mr. Run and Jump. Mr. Run and Jump. So this leads. I think me I believe, bought it for fifty bucks, by the way. So yeah, I, oh, I had to have, don't have a copy of it all yet. But this leads me to believe this that well, I don't have a copy either. It hasn't been released yet. Well, this leads me to believe this that this is a much better way to sell homebrew. Because it's much less expensive, and maybe they have economies of scale that are a little bit better than what Atari Age can do. Because and so at twenty nine ninety nine, this is a price point that's, you know, not that much more than getting in and out for the family, right? Yeah, like, no, it's way it's it's less expensive than going to McDonald's. It, less so, than going to McDonald's, that's for sure. I mean, I I hate to say it, but I would probably buy every cartridge at, at twenty nine ninety nine. Me too. Me too. I mean, I'm saying, oh, I got to own them all. You I know, will that's, buy... that's my price point. Yeah, twenty nine twenty nine ninety nine is a great price point. Well, um, one of the, we each had a few points about this. Do you have some concerns, other concerns? I have a couple and some things that uh, I'd like to see. Well, one thing I'd love to see a version of uh, Berserk and also Frenzy. They own Frenzy as well. Right. I'd love to see Berserk and Frenzy come out for the 1700. I'd love to see Frenzy come out for the 2600. I do wonder... You know, because it's seven eight hundred compatible. Uh, you know when there will be the time when they don't need to make twenty six hundred games anymore because the seven eight hundred is just that much more powerful. Right. To exactly. actually to make a game, I know, I know there's the there there is there's reasons to make twenty six hundred games, right. but um, I do think there's something about that, and I'd love to see uh, really good versions of Berserk and Frenzy from uh, in the seven eight hundred compatibility. Um, let's see. I my concern is this, that there's no second button, and what I want to see is that European seven eight hundred gamepad brought out. Yes. Um, with two buttons, but also a switch on it, so you can switch between three different modes. You can switch between the seven eight hundred two button mode. You can just flip a switch and get the NES two button mode, or you can flip a switch and get the two button mode that's used. For Omega Race, okay. Because Omega Race is a great, great, great game, um, and so that would be that would be kind of cool. Now, or but at the very least, bring out that seven hundred gamepad. Like that one needs to come out. Plus, obviously, seven hundred. Yeah, games. no, no pain line controller. Use the gamepad instead. The game gamepad would be better. And in fact, the thing about that was it would show that the seven eight hundred really was targeted at that more advanced market. It really wasn't, yeah. you know, twenty six hundred. Most people would say, oh, it's, I thought seven hundred was just a twenty six hundred. Just advance. It's like no, it was a whole different machine, man. It's a whole different and machine. Still, people don't even know like that much that. about it. Yeah, they don't really know that much about the seven eight hundred. They understand that the seven eight hundred is is literally, literally was a was an NES competitor, but never got a chance to be one. Well, and we talked about that in our last podcast with right. um, with Michael Feinstein, and we'll also talk about that more in our upcoming podcast about uh, GCC as well. So, so there's a lot of that still going on. Uh, to me, GCC and the 7800 are literally the vertical blank, like where right. we we sort of exist in what could have been, um, and and I think that that is this this right here, the 2600 plus is kind of the same thing. I mean, I, I, when we started this podcast five years ago, six years ago now, five, five half, years yeah. ago, almost six years ago, did you ever think that Atari, the the NFT no. crypto company speaker hat ho speaker hat hotels was gonna do this no these guys wade knows what he's doing it's it's really good um i i think obviously there's con some concerns about this especially the compatibility list there's, yeah you know, there, i mean it's not gonna do everything and so no, some people are gonna be mad. now maybe you can update the the firmware and they can have they can have firmware updates that actually support some of this other stuff um, you're qu I do question whether they want to support it. Well, right? I think it would be a good idea for them to come out with their own multi cards that do support that are supported by this, if possible, at some point. If they, if Harmony and Concerto don't work, 
um, and or other things like this to support the community because they are selling cartridges and people will buy them. But there's always going to be that I want to develop for this or I want to play some games you guys aren't going to come like third party games you guys can't come out with. And the multi carts just show and the ability to use them. Not necessarily a ROM, not necessarily a SD of ROMs, right? But it has to be in a cart that works, whatever it is. It shows that they still understand the community is still there. They're still good. The diehards are still going to buy these cartridges. They're going to be able to make money. But yeah, there's I mean, I would settle for Jeff. I would I would settle for a developer cart. A developer cart. It just right. allows me to flash it with my game to, that to would try work it. too. Right, exactly. Doesn't have to be a multi cart. I understand why game. they wouldn't. I understand why they wouldn't support multi carts. Right, it kind of takes away from their business. You know, if you're going to sell a cart with a bunch of games on it and sell it on the store, then supporting a multi cart that just has all the ROMs on it is kind of against your business model. I guess right? so. I, I think that there's so many games that they can't put on those carts, though. You know, there's lots of, like, I, I wouldn't, I like, oh, oh, but this, how about a, a multi cart of a bunch of homebrew? Stuff like that. Like, for the 70s, yeah. that would be great if they did those. Um, I, I will say, though, maybe having the, on the other side, you know, people have owned these games several, many, multiple times over. Right. I think we probably own every 2600 game that Atari has own owns right in 50 probably ways. 20 to 30 times over right different platforms over the years different collections actual physical versions etc um it, it may not be the games themselves as much as the experience of having the physical object the, the right. cartridge the box the manual the console to stick it into and then the hdmi output that we've never had before for for uh, 7800 games at least um so i don't know i mean it could go either way i hope they do support it all just and i hope they they keep improving this platform because i think it's really neat i think this is what people have been waiting for um so I was thinking of one add-on that I think would be great. What? I don't. Maybe it could be add-on of this, but you know the the Atari Eight Bit add-on. Now, what happened was this. It's a little. It's a cartridge thing that sticks in. You know, it just is going to run on the emulator. It, it, you can put in all the Atari Eight Hundred Eight Bit cartridges, but it comes with a little Atari Eight Bit USB keyboard that's about this big. <laughs> just like you, I have a tiny USB keyboard that I use um, with my um retro pie it could be a little target hunter and it's like it's got the keys it's got all the keys on it so you can actually type on it but that's all you need because some of these games just need like star raiders you just need the keys here's um, what i would do i wouldn't do that at all here's the reason computers are its own thing i think in the future they they should do some sort of uh compute you know some sort of mini 8-bit or mini atari you know, all that stuff here's what i would do i would I would say I would release 5,200 yep. games on these multi carts in Atari uh, in 2,600 sized yes. cartridges because all it's going to do is dump the ROMs and play them anyway. Right. So why not update it to be 5,200 compatible, be able to release the 5,200 games? That's one. They need a right? 5,200 controller though. They're going to need fine. a new controller. Fine, that that's what comes with it. You get it, the controller, you get the you get the the cart that has ten of the games on it, and you get the whatever is required to update the firmware. Okay, right? That's, that's, what that's a get. great idea, there. Okay, um, but it's just Atari twenty six hundred compatible sized. The way Atari should have done it in, in the, the first place right. when they made the fifty two hundred was made the cartridge fix some size. mistakes. Right, fix a mistake. Then, I would make another one of these that is Jag and Links Links compatible. And make make it make a Jaguar Plus. The Jaguar Plus allows both Jaguar and Lynx games to be plugged in and played. And then they can go ahead and release Lynx packs and Jaguar packs like they're doing this. And I think that would be amazing as well. It's a secondary product that's for later. The computers are their own thing. I think that you 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 pointed out the the big problem is with the computer you most a lot of the times you need different function keys you need you need the keyboard right. to play a lot of this stuff and i think that that becomes a problem but a 5200 like 5, in a 2600 idea. shape that would be easy i think not you know what i mean maybe well, easy that's not a the good right idea word. because because those you just have to rejigger any atari 8-bit cartridges you really wanted to put out into the 5200 yeah. format um because and so 
you know, any of the XEGS games that you still own, you, might, you can That's put right. them out play for the 5200, basically. Or, or, or then release all the Synapse games or whatever. Buy buy synapse in or you know what what was left of i don't know micro who it was. pros it was, games like you know yeah like, yeah, like stuff like that F i think that would be f15 um strike eagle it, that's a harder one because you need the keyboard to well play, but with so the 50 that... controller you could remap those keys onto the controller so... sure sure i would put a better 5200 controller i don't know exactly what it would be but i do like the idea if they could add 5200 compatibility in some way it would make it it would kind of seal the deal on all the original atari stuff all the original atari video game stuff that came out before 1984 i was supposed was supposed to come out before 1984 and that would be really cool um i wish they thought about the 5200 cap compatibility up front not the cartridge compatibility but being able to play the games and release a 5200 cart that's a good that idea worked that way i like i like that idea um okay steve so your final rating for this new Atari 2600 Plus before you even receive it? Um, I mean, just the idea, I'm going to give it an 8. An 8 out of 10? That's a B. Eight out That's of a 10. B. That's a solid B. Yeah, and now I have to play it first. And when we get them in November, we'll play them and do another update, and we'll talk about it, and maybe it'll be higher. I'm giving it a solid B plus at the moment. Okay. You no, know, with all the reservations I have, because I have reservations about why 7800 kind of is ignored, but I we, I guess we know why. You got to get this why thing out for Christmas because you got to get this out right now. Oh, oh, you mean they didn't make put a 7800 cart yet? No cart. Yeah, 7 is not ignored. It's just there's no. I mean, I I I I think by Christmas there'll be a 7800 cart. Me too. I just meant they had to get this this. If you look at the way all this hardware has to come out, September is when it needs to come out for Christmas, right? So you got to get this right. stuff out now. So if there's other things that come out, great. I am um, I'm looking forward to a deluge of 29.99 homebrew and new cartridges to purchase for Christmas for this. Me too. So, okay, this is just, we've never done this before. We don't really do just a quick news podcast to talk about some Atari thing, but this is super exciting. I want to get this out this So Sunday. let's, this is, um, this is, this is a, a shorter podcast, but I think it's, it's something we want to do. Uh, if Atari is going to keep doing this, we'll do it more often. Um, and this is, uh, this is this is exciting. I think, I think we ended here. Make it really let's quick just do and this. easy. This yeah. is the Atari and 2600 plus. News capsule. Atari 2600 plus news capsule. Right, there you go. Okay, okay. there you go. Okay, cool. so uh, until next time, Steve, into, into the vertical blind. Atari 2600 AHA flavored vertical blinds. Vertical blank. <laughs> into the vertical blind. Into the vertical blinds. <laughs> <laughs> into the vertical blind. Hi, this is Tony Longworth, UK dark alternative music composer and all-round Atari nut. Make sure to check out my Patreon music campaign. That's patreon.com slash Tony Longworth. Lots of free music over there. And if you can afford a dollar or two, please help me continue to write music. Thanks so much for listening to this podcast and supporting Into the Vertical Blank. And I hope you like this piece of music of mine.
an 8-Bit Rocket Studios production.